Welcome to another Inside Lyme podcast with your host, Dr. Daniel Cameron. In tonight's episode, Dr. Cameron will be discussing the case of a 63-year-old woman who was diagnosed with Southern Tick-Associated Rash Illness, also referred to as STARI. Good evening, Dr. Cameron. Thanks for joining us. And thank you for leading the discussion, Darlene. Um, the article was, um, was recently published, and it's entitled Southern Tick-Associated Rash Illness, Florida's Lyme Disease, and apparently the authors make some comparison with Lyme disease and STARI. Can you talk a little bit about the case? This patient, who is a 63-year-old woman, was bitten by a lone star tick on her right leg while camping in Gainesville, Florida. Then she noted an itchy target erythema lesion, which is like an EM lesion, after removing the tick. Now that particular uh, um, case is important because we're in Gainesville, Florida, and in that area, you know, they look for star eye, but they really don't look for Lyme disease. Then two weeks later, she had a fever, headache, diffuse muscle soreness uh, that lasted for four days. So now she had a tick, a rash, and sickness uh, within a short time frame. She even had a fever of 100.5 and a fast heart rate of 127, a low white count, anemia, low platelet count, and elevated liver function test. Now, in the Northeast where I practice, we're always concerned that there's a multiple different infections in the same tick. So we would think uh, low white count, anemia, low plate account, elevated liver is really ehrlichia or anaplasmosis. But I can tell you in practice that a variety of tick-borne illnesses can give you that pattern. And so that uh, case uh, reminds me of the kind of cases that I see in the Northeast, in New York. And now, um, do they, they ran some, several tests, right, for tick-borne illnesses as well? I mean, how did they come up with the diagnosis of, of star eye? Well, star eye is uh, one of those very confusing diagnoses. There was always a struggle over, are there erythema migraine rashes? Is there Lyme in the South? Uh, and so there was a compromise. Some people said, well, why don't we just call it a rash? So they called it a Southern Tick Associated Rash Illness. Now, the, the concern I've always had for years is just because I see a rash, um, there is really there is no blood test that uh, can uh, tell you how to star eye. It just means you have a rash uh, after a tick and you get sick. Uh, and that doesn't really help much uh, with this disease because how are you going to do any research on it? And how are you going to be sure a patient has only star eye? Once somebody's sick after a tick, then uh, I'm always concerned that uh, Lyme disease uh, is a possibility. Even if you take a biopsy of the rash, it's got the same uh, findings, which is called the lymphocytic dermal infiltrate. That means there's a certain types of white cells right in the, uh, in the tissue. So both of these are, are primarily based on clinical judgment. There's still no test, uh, and that uh, makes uh, star eye uh, very frustrating diagnosis. They think that star eye is from the lone star tick. So they said, well, that's a lone star tick. The deer ticks, they stay up north. Uh, we're having problems because the star eye didn't stay in the south. The star eye tick uh, shows up in the northeast. So the lone star tick is not just in the, in the south. Right. The lone star has been uh, moving. And it may have always been here, but the, since that the Lone Star tick um, is uh, mobile. It's, uh, it now seems to be uh, pretty much in the same locations as the deer tick. Mm -hmm. And the deer tick, conversely, the deer tick is now showing up in the Southern states, right, as well. So you've kind of got a crossover. Yes, uh, they, they've always found uh, the deer tick, which is, uh, you know, the generic name is called Exodes scapularis. This black-legged tick uh, it keeps getting um, discovered in the South. In fact, uh, 
Mississippi years ago was reporting uh, deer ticks, you know, deer tick bites, and uh, they were looking at it, ticks, but they found it in the um, in the winter, you know, like November, December through March, and uh, they had been looking again as why are there deer ticks down there? Why don't they find deer ticks in the summer? And it turns out in another article I wrote a blog on that deer ticks in the south are smart. If it's too hot and too dry in the south, they're not going to hang around on a blade of grass. They could seem to um, stay uh, in the undercover of the bush and uh, they'll come out more in the winter. And so it's kind of the opposite of what we see up here in Northeast. So, so let's go over real quick what the authors mentioned are the similarities between star A and, and Lyme disease. You, you had mentioned that the rash can be can appear similar. Well, there, there um, was an assumption that uh, nobody gets sick uh, more than a couple weeks from star I. But because there is no test uh, to show a star eye, any symptoms that someone would get after having a rash was often uh, overlooked and they weren't, they weren't really able to study the long-term consequences of star eye. We already know the long-term consequences of Lyme disease are neurologic, neuropsych, uh, autonomic, and et cetera, et cetera. And so I've always been frustrated that uh, we didn't have any formal studies of long-term outcome of star eye. So the researchers then are not quite sure how common this illness is then, right? Yeah, it's pretty hard to know where star eye is uh, in uh, the pattern if you don't have any great blood tests. You can say where the, the ticks are, but uh, you can't be sure um, someone has star eye, but you also can't be completely sure uh, that the illness is gone. I guess if you have a rash, you still don't know if it's a star eye rash or a Lyme disease rash. The only difference is anything in the South is called a star eye. Anything in the North is called uh, Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. So Lyme disease has, has the tests, but they're both of these illnesses are, are basically clinically diagnosed. Is that accurate? Yeah, I think that um, if you get a tick um, or if you get a rash in the north, uh, that helps. But there's plenty of people who don't get uh, either tick or a rash uh, in the northeast. And the same problem occurs in the south. You know, just because someone gets a rash, that's helpful. But uh, I'm always concerned about the people in the south who get uh, ill from a tick and don't have a rash. And also I'm concerned about uh, if there's deer ticks down there and they're getting, um, they're surviving and they can live uh, as nymphs and adults uh, that I'm concerned that there's a disease in the South that's easily getting overlooked and being dismissed as star eye. Yeah, the authors mentioned that uh, this patient, the 63 year old woman was, was treated similar to how you would treat, treat Lyme disease, right? Yeah, it's hard to do any clinical trials on star eye if you don't have a great blood test for it mm -hmm. and uh, you're not sure what the outcome is. And so they're just guessing and presuming that the same treatment you use for a, a deer tick bite should work down there. Now, my concern also is that when uh, they focus in on uh, one disease, which is uh, star eye, that uh, there's so many other co-infections that uh, are recognized from a tick bite is that um, just a, a 14 day course of doxycycline, um, I'm always concerned that that might uh, miss some of the other infections that are seen in the ticks in the Northeast. In fact, as they look all over the country is that the CDC has recognized perhaps 17 different infections in ticks. And so even though there's regional differences in ticks, I think we need a lot more research on what ticks are doing in the South and what diseases are being transmitted by the ticks. Thanks so much, Dr. Cameron, for joining us. This was an, an interesting case and uh, 
viewers can read more about it on your blog at danielcameronmd.com. Have a good evening. Thanks. Thanks again for joining us.